Hey everyone. Well, we have completed the designing for monitoring almost all the relevant modules and submodules. And today we are going to start design for business continuity. And this uh, module has two submodules, or you could say this topic contains like two modules, uh, which are one for design for high availability, and another one is design for disaster recovery. BCDR, we could say, because it also uh, not only DL, but also backups. <clears throat> so today we are going to talk about design for HA. And um, I'm pretty sure you guys are aware of highly available solution, highly available uh, virtual machines, things like that. And if you want to understand those in detail, you could check uh, my playlist, which is, which, which is the architectural concept where these things are explained in detail. But for the sake of this video, let's let's talk about uh, design for HS solution as per the syllabus highlighted. All right. <clears throat> so the very first thing that we understand uh, with HA is organizations doesn't want to see a downtime. It is more or less, if you're running an application, let's suppose it's running on a single virtual machine and that can go down, that can go bad. So we run one more virtual machine just to uh, take care if something goes wrong with the VM1, VM2 will take over in a nutshell. Why we do that? To avoid the downtime, right? because organization doesn't wanna see downtime. And if you try, if you think a little deeper, you would understand why. Simply means application downtime can cause a loss of business, right? A loss of user trust, user base, you can, look, you can lose your user base as well. You might have seen there like so many mobile application like WhatsApp, right? If WhatsApp goes down, the user base will move to a different uh, chatting application. So WhatsApp will try everything from highly available solution to make it further so that they will not lose their user base. That's the reason, uh, highly high availability, uh, one of the primary factors while designing the solution architecture, especially for the mission critical applications. It's not like you design highly available solution for every damn thing. No, it's not like that because it also involve a lot of other things. And if you're thinking about cost, then of course you are right. And if you're thinking about manageability or complexity, of course you're right. So whenever you create or design highly available solution, it is more complex than the other solutions. Of course, when your application is running on a single virtual machine, you're paying for that. To make it highly available, you, are, you start paying for the two virtual machines. Somebody is gonna pay. So that's why I was talking about mission critical application. You're not, you're not gonna make highly available every damn thing. Okay, hope this is clear. So we will talk about these things from the solutioning perspective. <clears throat> so let's say we do understand the requirement of application uptime varies as I, as I just explained. Uh, just to give you an example, if you have an external facing application with a large user base, 
maybe an e-commerce or a social media, then they will opt for almost 100% uptimes because you have rarely seen the, the Amazon or Facebook or WhatsApp going down. So they almost try to achieve 100% availability. So in the uh, however, in the case of internal applications like you guys might be using uh, in your organization, like your HR system, your, your blogging system, your wiki system, that can easily tolerate some downtime. You need not to spend a lot of money and complexity to make everything highly available, right? So <clears throat> to achieve, uh, where is my mouse? Okay, here. To achieve a highly available architecture, it is better to plan workloads in the isolated physical locations of the data center so that if an outage happens in one place, then your app applications replica can operate from another location. And with this statement, if you're thinking about availability set, availability zone, and different region, data center in different region, then you are not wrong. That's how you design the highly available solution. And these are various uh, tools or weapons we have provided by Microsoft if we are talking about Azure. You can place more than one application in fall tolerant, uh, a domain or update domain if you are opting for AV set you can choose availability zones uh, it depends like how many nines you're looking for right so we already discussed a lot about uh, HA even in the past as I was saying so <clears throat> uh, I was talking about nines and uh, it is not only Microsoft Azure, rather any hyperscaler provide availability as number of nines. And as you strive for more nines, the cost and complexity grows. And uptime of four nines translate to about like five minutes of total downtime per month. Is it worth the additional complexity and cost to reach five nines? The answer depends on the business requirement, which ultimately comes to the same thing, mission critical, non-mission critical, or how much revenue the business is generating from that application, is it worth it? So ultimately just do not go ahead and design super highly available solution, but you try to understand the business requirement first. And you need to ask questions. You need to ask questions like, uh, what are the uh, availability requirements for this application? Because and there could be multiple applications running in an organization. So you need to understand the availability requirement for each and every application. You need to ask the questions like, how much downtime is acceptable? So uh, let me write this down so that we could revise it at the end, availability requirement, right? We need to ask about how much downtime is acceptable. If you are relating this with RPU and RTU, you are right. How much uh, uh, should you invest in making the application highly available? Because sometimes it's not worth it. Maybe you want for your application, but if you compare the cost, it's not worth it. So you need, to, you need to see how much cost is there to make the application highly available and how much uh, is the revenue, is it worth it? You need to check the data backup requirements. Also data replication and monitoring. These are the different tools or questions that you need to ask. And these will help you design the right solution. Highly available solution is not always the right solution, but the solution 
which actually matches the requirement is the right solution. And no solution matches the right requirement until you dig it out the exact requirement, right? Uh, we could also talk about latency requirement, right? Because these things will definitely influence or impact your solution. So you need to ask these questions to actually understand the need, the requirement, the business requirement, and then apply your, your uh, uh, cloud knowledge to come up with the best solution. You need to think, uh, you, need to, you need to consider the, the, as I said, RPU and RTU. Similarly, you need to also be, you need to be aware of MTBF and MTTR measurement. The higher your SLA, the less frequently the service can go down and the quicker the server must recover. So MTBF and MTTR. So what is MTBF? Well, it is mean time between failures. And MTTR is the mean time to recover. Average time it takes to restore a component after failure. So you need to keep the measurement active for the for your applications. These are the things we need to consider before we plan a highly available solution. Now, if we talk about uh, various uh, tools which come into the picture, as per the syllabus, we're gonna talk about a little bit on uh, Azure front door, which will help you to move traffic into two different region. And then we have Azure Traffic Manager. It also does the same thing, but in a different way. Let me open this design for you. Well, in, in this uh, design, you can see the Azure Monitor right here. And we have one active region and another one is the standby region. Okay, so Azure Front Door, it offers a fast, reliable, and secure modern cloud content delivery network by using the Global Edge Network of Microsoft. Azure Front Door optimizes access times to, to content. And this can easily be configured in such a way that you could achieve uh, availability between two regions. And you can define like primary and secondary region. It could be in such a way like both the regions are active or active passive with hot standby or active passive with cold standby. In this particular uh, design, you can see one is active, another one is standby region. If it is hot, then there would not be any downtime. As soon as this region goes down, front door will be aware and started sending traffic here, and it will accept and respond to the traffic. If it is cold standby, then means the VMs in the second region aren't allocated until needed for failover, means the required the basic requirement is done. However, it will take some time to get the things up and running and ready to respond to the request. And in active, active, it is just like uh, the hot I said, but it would be completely active. In hot standby means VMs in the second region are running. Okay, and if we talk about active active, both regions are active and requests are load balanced between them. If one region becomes unavailable, it's taken out of rotation. So do not get confused with active active and hot standby because in active active requests are going in both the direction. And in hot standby, it only re respond to the request once this is down. Now, the same thing, uh, almost same thing happens in case of the uh, traffic manager. 
However, traffic manager is uh, not exactly a load balancer. Uh, it is uh, DNS routing. So it distributes between the region as well. All right, so this is the another design that I have borrowed from Microsoft documentation. And this is uh, the traffic manager, as you can see with the uh, right here. This is the traffic manager who is managing the traffic between two regions, the West US and East US. And <clears throat> it can be configured with multiple profiles that we have already covered in the other videos. Uh -huh. But here in highly available solution, we could utilize uh, Azure Traffic Manager, just like Azure Front Door. However, Front Door is layer seven and this is DNS based routing. In this particular design, if you see the application gateway are used between the three uh, VMs. So these VMs, multiple VMs are running to achieve the highly available solution. Same thing happening in the business layer and uh, this is the database region, uh, the third one, data for data TF subnet, even this is highly available. So in a highly available solution, we not only think about uh, VMs or one component, we think, we think about each and every component, which could hamper the design. If, uh, I don't know whether I have mentioned this or maybe I'm repeating myself, but yes, if you want the highly available application, let's suppose 99.99% of SLA, and one of the component in your application has maybe 99.9% .9 of availability, then your entire solution would not achieve the 99.99%. You need to find a way to make the each and every component uh, highly available. All right, well, well uh, with this, let's close this video. And in another videos, we'll try to see the highly available solution for compute and for database. Well, thank you for watching and you have a good day. Bye-bye.